So hey guys, here we have question number 9 from MCQs of the chapter Thermal Physics from Pathfinder. So yeah, now let's look at the question first. A piston can slide without friction inside a horizontal cylindrical vessel which contains an ideal monoatomic gas. The piston and the inner surface of the cylinder are coated with a thin layer of perfect heat insulating material. Initially, the piston is in equilibrium piston in equilibrium divides the cylinder into two parts A and B which are not necessarily equal. The temperatures of the gases in both the parts are equal. Now the piston is held in its initial position and the gas in part A is supplied some amount of heat. Then the piston is released. What will be the uh, what will the piston do in subsequent motions? Uh, and there are four options which are uh, first is that it will execute oscillatory motion of a definite amplitude. Second option is that it will stop somewhere to the right of its initial position after several oscillations of decreasing amplitude. Third option is that it will stop exactly where it had started after several oscillations of decreasing amplitude. And the fourth option is that certainly it will execute oscillations of dec decreasing amplitude, but the position where it will finally stop depends on the amount of heat supplied. So if you want to give this question a try, uh, you can do it now. And let me tell you, it is a, a fairly tricky and a difficult question. So please give it a fair share of try uh, before looking at the hint or the solution. So yeah, now let's look at the hint. So the hint is uh, try thinking at the microscopic level. Basically, try thinking for the molecules as discrete rather than as what we do in generally in thermodynamics or thermal physics. So if you want to give this question a try again uh, with with this hint, uh, you can do it now. So yeah, now let's look at the solution. Okay, so the first decision here that we have to make is whether it will all it will or will, will not sustain simple harmonic motion as the time proceeds or basically will the amplitude de decrease or remain constant. So first, let's assume the cylinder is moving to uh, the piston is moving to the right with a small speed small uh, and here the small is with respect to the thermal speeds of the gas molecules which are v rms or v average or uh, v most probable in that way so here i've assumed the piston is moving in the right with v velocity and uh, here i've assumed the average velocity of gas particles along the axis of the cylinder to be u so basically we don't uh, really care much about the average velocities in the other direction that as it won't affect the uh, collisions along uh, the piston so here we are considering only along the axis. So let's consider any two general molecules which are going to collide with the part, uh, partition and find the impulse imparted by them. So here I have assumed two molecules uh, U approaching the piston and uh, and we can clearly see as we uh, generally assume it to be an elastic collision. We won't go into complications uh, assuming it to be inelastic and stuff. But here, after the collision, uh, the first particle will gain a velocity of u minus 2v in the opposite direction and the second particle will gain a velocity of u plus 2v uh, again in, in its opposite direction. So the impulse imparted by the molecules, uh, I've assumed this to be J A, uh, a molecule and V molecule. And so the J A will be m times u plus u minus 2v, is e which will be equal to 2m times v min u minus v. And uh, we can clearly see that this impulse uh, due to the first particle will be in the right direction. And similarly, the impulse due to second particle will be m times u plus u plus 2v, which will be equal to 2m times u plus v, and uh, it will be in the left direction. So uh, this is the impulse for a uh, discrete, uh, discrete particle, which is colliding with the piston. And the number of particles colliding with uh, with the piston can uh, can be shown proportional. Sorry, can uh, can be shown will be proportional to u minus v and u plus v because uh, the the particles are uh, in the container area are uh, approaching along this and the particles uh, uh, here the probability of the particle striking uh, will be directly proportional to u minus v and it can be visualized if you think ab about a bit. So uh, the total uh, force on uh, this piston due to the particles colliding from the A chamber will be proportional to the moment, uh, momentum uh, impulse given by one particle and uh, multiplying it by the uh, number of particles and it will give us the total impulse and the impulse is basically proportional to the force. So Fa will be directly proportional to 2m times u minus v whole squared. And similarly for uh, particles coming from the B chamber, it will be proportional to 2m times u plus v whole squared. 
so uh, here we can see that uh, u minus v will be less than u plus v of course so fb will clearly be greater than fa so here fa minus fb clearly will be less than zero hence the net force on the piston while moving towards right is in the left direction as i just shown so when it is uh, it has a velocity in the positive uh, x direction it will um, it will be having a resistive force in the opposite direction and similarly it can be shown that if it were going to the left the force would have been to the right direction so clearly uh, the uh, it is clearly slowing down at all the moments hence it must be in a damped simple harmonic motion and it cannot be sustained even if we assume any resistive force like friction at the even without uh, considering any resistive forces like friction uh, at the piston surface or stuff like that and we could have also shown this uh, using we could also thought uh, thought of this in a way that in whichever direction it shall move the gas gets compressed and the density of the gas in the vic vicinity of the piston increases and hence the pressure in that part increases while when it's moving away from it it shall be lesser so this Im imbalance causes it to slow down so you can think of it in this way also uh, which i've just said so you would get the, again get the same result so we have uh, we are done with the first result that in any case it will be ha having a damped simple harmonic motion so it will finally stop at some moment so now let's say this piston stops after many oscillations this piston stops at some position now from the options it is clear that now we have to decide where will it stop with respect to its original position now as it as it will be in mechanical equilibrium their pressures will be equal but we can't say whether their temperatures will be equal or not and after achieving this equilibrium, we might think that the temperatures can't change any further as the piston is not conducting. So basically what we are saying is uh, it uh, achieves a mechanical equilibrium, but uh, we are not sure of the temperatures of the both uh, the gases and we are not even sure whether uh, its temperatures will change after that because the piston is adiabatic. So it makes uh, uh, sense uh, that, uh, that no heat should flow between them. So they should remain at... Uh, at a constant temperature but this is not the case as we'll see further but here we have to think more fundamentally and think about what gives us the temperature of gas now here we have to consider the small variations which we averaged out in our uh, in the laws we use that uh, we assume it to be uh, in equilibrium so basically we will see that now so as the temperature is basically the measure of ga uh, average translation kinetic energy so the molecules in the chamber having higher temperature will have higher average speeds so this is uh, very trivial and obvious to understand and when we are observing the gas to be in me mechanical equilibrium it doesn't mean that there won't be random fluctuations in it so this is what i said because uh, when we uh, take the sample to be uh, when we uh, start increasing the size of our sample the random fluctuations which we uh, assume in statistical thermodynamics or uh, so, so they kind of average out and we don't observe them at very large systems uh, which we uh, usually face in our general lives but here we have to we we'll have to consider that so there will of course be random uh, fluctuations but they will happen in very small level and will cause the movement of the piston and the molecules will keep on imparting unequal impulses until they have finally have same temperatures so basically what uh, uh, let's assume that this is a piston so uh, basically let's say some particle here or uh, a single particle is coming uh, at it at this moment and it collides and goes away and during this uh, during let's say a small time interval when it goes from here to here no other particle has collided with it so basically due to this particle this piston has gained some impulse in this direction and it will start moving in that direction so uh it has gained some velocity in th that direction which is very small which we can't observe on uh, uh on the large scale but it will gain some velocity nevertheless and it will do some work in this uh, uh, in this direction so basically there will be work done but we won't be able to observe it on a very large level but a, a large number of such af so basically after a long time these uh, effects can be seen uh, or can be observed even in larger cases even larger samples so here uh, that's what i've said so, so these particles will keep on colliding and let's say temp uh, the gas here has higher temperature so the particles here in this side will be hitting much more hard uh, or rather more harder in comparison to this so on an average 
this piston uh, will be moving in slightly this direction and this will be cooling down and this will be heating up so and this is not at all due to the heat transfer but this is due to the uh, the impulse is given and it, this is kind of a uh, being like a work done uh, scenario rather than uh, heat rather than heat being transferred so that's what i've said here so here basically the energy is flowing due to the impulses due to the collision rather than the heat conducted through the piston as the piston is adiabatic although it's true that this process will be very slow and by the uh, by the t by then the first process damping uh, which i uh, discussed earlier which is the damping of the piston would be near completion but still they will again become isothermal in the end so finally uh, as it's obvious that uh, the both the pistons will gain equal temperature in the end uh, due to this uh, energy uh, transfer so finally again as the pressures in the both will be equal and the temperatures will also be equal so by ideal gas law hence the volumes will be in the same ratio before the start of the process as the number of moles in the uh, chambers haven't changed so hence option b is correct because it will again return to its original position because the ratios uh, of the volumes have to be kept same so it will stop exactly where it had started after several os oscillations of decreasing amplitude so yeah uh, this is uh, the question and uh, you can uh, for more information on such processes you can search adiabatic piston on google and you will find many articles on this and also i have linked a uh, aops discussion thread in the description uh, based upon which uh, m most of the discussion uh, which I have discussed in this video is taken only some of new things I have added so yeah go, be sure to check it out and there is also mathematical uh, mathematically rigorous uh, proof to what what is happening in uh, case uh, in the process too so uh, you can check it out yourself so yeah, I hope you all like the video please like share and subscribe thank you